Do you camp in cold weather? While RVing is generally associated with summertime and warm weather activities, you can use your RV for winter recreation as well. However, you need to make sure that you and your RV are well equipped for the unique challenges of cold weather camping. As you might guess, RVs don't have as good an insulation as a sticks and bricks home. Some RVs, but not all, come as a four season certified rig. This means different things across manufacturers, but some of the things that you might expect to see in a four season capable RV is better insulations in some places, including maybe the floor, the walls, the ceiling. You may also get dual pane windows. Windows are a huge heat loss when it's cold outside. So having that dual pane is very good for insulation. A lot of these four season RVs may have better insulated or even heated tank bays. So that's gonna keep your fresh gray and black water tanks from freezing when it's really cold out. Overall, these four season certified RVs are generally going to be better designed to withstand cold temperatures while camping. However, whether you have a four season certified rig or not, we're going to be talking about some of the things that you can do to protect your RV while camping out in freezing temperatures and how to stay warm while doing it. First, let's talk about staying warm while inside your RV. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to use your furnace and set it to stay warm, come on before anything freezes in the rig, including you. Most RVs come with a propane-based furnace. And a lot of times this furnace will release heat into the RV, but also release some heat down into your storage base near where your tanks are, where some maybe electronics are, and keep that area generally from freezing as well. So it's very important to keep this furnace running to keep all of your pipes thawed, everything working fine in the underbelly of your coach. If you're hooked up to electricity, you can offset the usage of propane in your furnace by using a standard electric space heater. This is the space heater that we use in our RV and we can set the temperature on it so that we can just warm it up to where we need it to be in the RV. It also works very well for keeping a certain area of the RV that we spend most of our time in during the day warmer than say another area. This works great if you're hooked up to electricity, but if you're not, you can also utilize space heaters that run on propane. These small propane heaters are great and super efficient. However, you do need to leave a window open to let oxygen into the RV and to vent moisture and exhaust from this heater. Another way that you can keep your RV warm from the inside is to increase some of the insulation values on some places that aren't very well insulated. I'm talking about filling those skylights that you have or vents with a insulative pillow like this one put the reflective side down to reflect the heat back into your RV. And then also getting some reflector stuff like this to put in your windows. You can get this stuff and cut it to size and put them in your windows. And that really helps with keeping the heat back into your RV. Now, besides the challenge of actually keeping the interior of your RV warm, you also may run into condensation. Since you have the RV all closed up and you're breathing in there and maybe you're running that propane heater that's releasing moisture into the air or any scenario like that, moisture in the air, if it comes in contact with a cold surface like a cold window, it's going to condense and that condensation can build up. You're gonna notice condensation happening pretty much anywhere that it gets cold. So in dark corners, underneath the mattress, on your windows, and if left there, it can start to grow some mold. So you're gonna wanna stay on top of the moisture situation in your RV. Most of the time you can just towel this up, but you may want to invest in some moisture absorbers that you can put around the RV, particularly maybe in the back of the closet where it gets cold or even get a dehumidifier to help pull that moisture out of the air. Another thing that you can try is running your air conditioner, which may seem counterintuitive when it's cold outside, but it will actually do that same thing, pull the moisture from the air. You just might have to tolerate it getting a little bit colder in here for a while and then kick the heat back on. Sometimes you can't help but let the RV get a little bit cooler when you're camping in colder temperatures. So you're gonna wanna layer up, invest in some good 
slippers to keep your feet warm. And what we love to do is actually use electric blankets. This is a great way to stay warm if you're sitting in one place for a while or warming up that bed right before you crawl into it. It's a great way to warm up a cold mattress and, and just stay warm without having to heat the entire space of the RV. This is a very efficient way to keep yourself warm and we even use this while we're boondocking because it's so efficient. So now that we've talked about some interior considerations, let's step outside and talk about some of the exterior considerations for cold weather camping. Cold weather can sneak up on you when you're RVing and it might just be for a day or a couple of days. If you're planning on being in extended cold weather, however, there are a couple additional things that you can do to make your experience much more enjoyable. This is our RV and we have it set up for longer term cold weather RVing. And one of the first things that you'll notice is that it is wrapped in this RV skirting. RV skirting refers to anything that blocks the space underneath the RV from the bottom of the RV to the ground. What this does is provide an insulative air gap and holds that air underneath your RV. This is going to keep your RV warmer and prevent wind from pulling heat out of your RV. RV skirting can be made out of a variety of materials, including wood, foam board, even hay bales, basically anything that blocks that underside of your RV. The stuff behind me is a custom vinyl skirting that we had specially measured and fit to our RV. It uses a channel system, which makes a almost airtight seal around the RV, making that air gap sealed and much more effective. The nice thing about a vinyl skirting over some of the other materials is that it can actually be rolled up and taken with you and it's more portable. It's a little bit harder to move foam board and wood or hay bales from place to place. So if you're on the move, this is a really good option. We got this skirting in Rapid City, South Dakota at Custom Skirting LLC. We stayed at their campground and they came out, measured us, and then went back to their factory and custom made this skirt special to our measurements. Then they came back out with the skirting and showed us how to install it in the channels. The skirting goes a couple feet further than the ground so that it can fold under and be held down either with stakes or with water bladders that you put around the edge to keep it nice and sealed down. We have a small electric heater underneath the RV to help keep that insulative air pocket warm. We have this heater on low as it doesn't need to keep it hot in there, it just needs to help keep it above freezing, which helps everything in the underbelly, including our tanks and pipes, stay above freezing. This extra heat actually rises up and into those floorboards, helping keep our interior warmer. In addition to the RV skirting, one of the things that you can do to help in extremely cold situations is to actually insulate around the outsides of your slides. The slide walls are much thinner and less insulated than the rest of the RV. So when your slides are out, they're much more susceptible to that cold. What some people will do is install foam board on the outsides of those slides to create more insulation. The manufacturer of our skirting actually creates a product called Thermoslides, which is vinyl that holds this foam board in place all the way around those slides. Overall, we have loved having RV skirting. It reduces our propane from running our furnace all the time. It reduces the noise from that furnace running all the time, which is great. And overall just makes it much warmer in the RV and much more comfortable to spend a lot of time out in the cold weather. If you're going to be RVing in freezing temperatures, you're gonna to have to think about your water and sewer connections. This RV has an insulated water bay, but not all RVs do. If you don't have an insulated water bay that's kept warm by the furnace, you're going to want to take a couple extra steps to make sure those don't freeze. If you have a standard water hose hooked up to your RV, it is liable to freeze up and cut off your water supply. You really have two ways that you can deal with this. Either you can disconnect your water hose and just rely on your warmer water tanks running your water pump, or you can insulate or heat that hose to make sure that the water keeps flowing. This is a heated water hose. As you can see, it's a bit heftier and that's because it is insulated and has a heated wire running the length of it to keep the water warm and flowing. 
This model also has a couple of electric pigtails on either end of it so that it can be wrapped around, say, your spigot or your water connection to make sure that that doesn't freeze as well. We got this hose from No Freeze Water Hose and it is rated to go down to temperatures of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we don't anticipate being in that cold of weather, but it's great to know that this will keep flowing even in as cold of temperatures as that. A heated water hose needs a source of electricity. So here is the hose's electrical cord that plugs into the 120 on the electric pedestal, or you can even plug it into your RV. This hose self-regulates its temperature. So as the temperature gets colder outside, the more power it draws to stay warm and unfrozen. Conversely, if temperatures warm up, it'll use less power, which is better efficiency overall. Now let's talk about the water coming out of your RV, AKA your sewer. Best practice is to keep your valves closed unless you are actively dumping. This is because if you have a little bit of stuff dribbling out, it could freeze up and either damage your valves themselves or just clog up your sewer hose, which nobody wants to deal with. Now, if you have a smaller tank and you do want to leave your valve open to run the water as much as you want, you can get a heated sewer hose. No freeze water hose also makes these heated sewer hoses if you're in that situation. This is best for prolonged freezing temperatures, but if you're in intermittent freezing temperatures, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. On the topic of water, you're also going to want to be cognizant of your water heater. We have an on-demand water heater and we need to make sure that we leave it on so that all the components don't freeze up as it is located on the exterior of the RV. If you have a tanked water heater, you're also going to want to keep that warm and on so that you don't experience any freezing in that tank. Since you're going to be running your furnace a lot, you're going to want to keep an eye on your propane levels. This RV has two 40 pound tanks and those last us quite a while. But if you have different sized tanks on your RV, you're gonna wanna figure out what your rate of burn is. One way that you can check the level of your propane tank is to pull it out and kind of feel the weight of it, give it a good shake. Uh, but if you want a little bit more precise measuring method, you can get a propane checker like this that will tell you how much you have approximately left in your tank so that you can plan accordingly to get them refilled. Now, if you have smaller propane tanks and you feel like you're burning through them a lot, having to go and get them refilled every couple of days, you might wanna think about getting an external propane tank, one of those really big ones that sits out front and that will lower the amount of times that you have to go and get it refilled. In addition to keeping an eye on your propane levels for your furnace, you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on your house batteries. Your furnace requires the 12 volt power from your batteries to be able to run the electronics and function. If you're hooked up to power, the converter will take care of most of this and you won't have to worry about it too much. But especially if you're off grid and relying on those batteries, if those batteries discharge too low or get too cold and freeze up, you could lose your furnace. That's a situation you do not want to have when you're in freezing temperatures. Many RV battery compartments are vented to the outside because of lead acid batteries. That's going to make them much more susceptible to getting cold. All batteries suffer in cold weather because the chemical reaction inside them is slowing down. Lead acid batteries can actually freeze up if they're discharged too low and this can damage them. So make sure to keep them charged or warm if you can. This is much easier to do with lithium ion batteries, which you can install in an interior compartment that can be kept warm by the furnace or by the ambient heat inside the RV. So make sure to keep your RV house batteries charged and if possible, warm. So if you're willing to take a few extra steps to make sure you and your RV are bundled up, cold weather camping is extremely doable. It's a great way to enjoy winter recreation and extend your camping season.